What's going on YouTube? How's everybody doing? I hope everybody's doing great as usual. Guys, I know I say this all the time and I know it I know that I always start off by saying guys, but guys, listen. I am going to just be as clear and <clears throat> transparent as I possibly can. There is really not that much of a difference at all in game mode specifically HDR game mode than one may think <clears throat> between these three TVs <clears throat> excuse me guys we have the A95L to the left we have the G4 in the middle and we have the G3 to the right and don't get me wrong guys you you're going to see me giving credit when credit is due and I'm just gonna let you know what some of my first reactions were while I was setting this up for you guys um, but honestly if you have a G3 and you game <clears throat> and you uh, don't really want to turn as many enhancements on as possible or you're not a big fan of dynamic tone mapping for whatever reason, even though I think you should play with dynamic tone mapping on. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, there's no reason, in my personal opinion, to get the G4 if you're going to um, pick, try to pick between the G3 and the G4. Specifically, let's just say if you're even a 75% gamer and 25% watching or streaming. So that's my opinion there, right? Um, only because, as you guys can clearly see, they look dead even in brightness. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be measurement differences, and especially in you know different percentages of windows and things like that. But um, just what you perceptually see is unnoticeable unless you have these three TVs just lined up like this and I'm going to talk about what I notice um, but anyways so nonetheless guys um, I just want to show you something before I get into the other settings for the TVs so as you guys can see like I was saying before brightness is close and <clears throat> my other statement was that if you don't really plan on using dynamic tone mapping or any tone mapping whatsoever in your ACR gaming, <clears throat> excuse me, then you would most likely go with the G3 because I'll show you in the settings. We're going to go right to picture on the A95L. We're going to go down to brightness and as you see we have HDR tone mapping off and just to take it a little bit further oops sorry let me go down you don't see any other oh hold on let me turn this off I don't know why I went back there oh it is off okay um, so you're not seeing any other assistance in the reality creation right this is pretty much just native settings gradation you can literally turn off or on low I don't really see any difference at all um, with color gradation in 4k HDR gaming through the PS5 I don't know if it's different with any other console or uh, PC for that matter I don't know but for the PS5 I I mean I've sat there for a good half an hour 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 and a half going through different videos didn't really see a uh, any gradation difference it and I mean I even put it on low and I once I mean I'm sorry I even put it on high when I put it on high um, I did see a slight difference in certain content and it wasn't in gaming it was more so 4k demos on YouTube and things like that all right so low or off I mean I put it on low just in case it helps mitigate something or uh, improve 
something uh, with gradation, but to me, low is just as equal as off on um, the A95L. But this is just to show you, as native as it gets, that's where we're at, all right? For brightness, specifically, not color. And then I'm just going to show you over here really quick. They were in the G4. And you're also going to see under brightness that dynamic tone mapping is off and expression enhancer is off. And I don't even think because of the HDSC super resolution is uh, faded out. And I think that's primarily because of my uh, splitter. Um, but regardless, it's clearly off, so you're not getting any assistance there. Plus, I never put that feature or enable that feature regardless. All right, now we're going to go to the G3. And as you'll see, dynamic tone mapping is off, expression enhancer off, and I think because this is the primary input that you will actually be able to see that uh, clarity. Yeah, see, super resolution is highlighted where I can toggle it on and off on this TV in game mode, but not on the G4. And I believe that's not a TV settings thing. I think it's a connection thing between uh, for HDMI's into the splitter. I think it's receiving um, on a, another uh, port uh, differently as far as the uh, signal goes. So anyways, but either way, it doesn't matter because super resolution, as you can see, is clearly off, right? So there's no assistance in brightness or for whatever, you know, for intensive purposes of just doing a native kind of comparison, not really native, but, you know, enhancements uh, with all three TVs. And as you guys can see, the brightness is literally like dead even. So that's my point. The G3 definitely is a steal if you keep your settings similar to that. As far as color goes and um, black levels go, go ahead. Obviously, you know, you can do what you want. But if you're not really concerned too much about that two, three, four to five percent better in detail, or if you don't care about controlling your own tone mapping, like Tone Mapping Pro in the G4, um, ALLM on and off toggle, things like that, um, splitting your screens via HDMI, if you don't care any, and there's other reasons too, um, the new processor, of course, uh, the new IU, um, yeah. But look how similar they look. It doesn't get any better than any of these three TVs. They're like dead even, all right? So if you had to save the money and you don't, and you need to save the money and it's important for you to save the money, just go with the G3 while they last in stock. Just do it, all right? Because, um, you know... Or the S89C, the S90C, uh, that's a great TV as well. I personally never owned that TV, but if you're a 75% gamer, then you'll get the best of both worlds, because even if you don't really turn on too many of those enhancements, it does get brighter in its most native or natural state um, that brighter than these three TVs, not by a huge amount, but enough to be make it a noticeable difference, you know. So and plus it's a QD OLED, so you have the advantage of Samsung's, you know, color, uh, the way they display colors uh, so vividly uh, versus the rest of the competition. They already kind of have that. They've had that down pat number one for years, so we all know that. Um, so yeah, so that's probably the two reasons plus their price as well. All right, but. If you guys, let's say you're a 50-50 person where you game but 
picture quality is important to you and things like that, you would also want to go with the G3. There's not that much of a difference in any of those modes besides things I will talk about a little bit later. But primarily, long story short, it's going to be the fine details. It's going to be the, you know, brighter highlights. And even then, sometimes it's still not always at its, you know, obvious best. All right. But anyways, this is when I see the difference. All right, guys. So now we're going to go ahead and we're obviously going to go to tone mapping. Since we're talking about brightness, dynamic tone mapping, we're going to go ahead and just turn that on. All right. And as you can see, it just gets noticeably brighter. And that's the G3. We're going to go again to brightness on the G4. All right. And as you can see, professional is off, but we're going to go ahead and turn dynamic tone mapping on. And as you can see, they're both bright. And this is where I notice uh, the biggest difference right here. Um, the whites are just more pure white, all right? So we all kind of know that dynamic tone mapping a lot of times can uh, interrupt or just wash out details or can make, uh, you know, certain highlights clip things like that but overall you can clearly see that dynamic tone mapping on for the g4 is brighter when you're gaming all right that's my point so i was i think i made a comment about that um on my first video when i got the g4 just like something small that I noticed, but I never used, I never showed you as an example, and that's your example right there. As you can clearly see, this area that I'm going to walk on right here is brighter. And don't get me wrong, it is more noticeably brighter through the camera than it is in person, but it's still noticeable in person. All right. So that's one thing I noticed. Now, I'm going to pick up the camera and I'm also going to show you the other things that I noticed. But before I do that, what I want to do is go to the A95L. All right. And uh, you're going to see again brightness and we're going to go down to tone mapping. And we're going to go ahead and turn that on brightness preferred. All right, I feel as if brightness preferred is closer to dynamic tone mapping on with the G3 and the G4. It's closer to that than it is to gradation preferred. All right, as far as brightness goes. And as you can see, this is my point of when I want to explain something to you of when you give credit when credit is due all right yeah it's blown out okay i get that guys but let's just ignore that for a second right there all right now it's funny because the g3 has dynamic tone mapping on the g4 has dynamic tone mapping on and the a95l has dynamic tone mapping uh, or tone mapping i should say on brightness preferred right overall picture looks to be the same except for the fact that the a95l if you look really close overall has the brightest picture out of all three of them I never thought I would see that but that's not the end-all be-all it's, it's not all right now this is this is what I want to explain really quick. All right. We have all three TVs with tone mapping on. Um, 
we have similar settings as far as black levels go. They're dead center because I was trying to really just keep this, you know, as equal as possible. So you guys have your your own judgment starting from the neutral end of the settings. All right. Um, now, my point is, is that although the A95L is the um, brighter, and not even by that big of a margin, it's a slightly brighter, all right? Um, let's talk about the other perspective of things when you're gaming, like details, fine details and things like that, as far as the picture settings go. Um, this is where you see another difference, all right? So just because the A95L is a little bit brighter doesn't necessarily mean that it's better. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of people get those two mixed up, all right? So we all know that Sony is, they're, they're masters at fine details, processing, and things like that. They have an edge on a lot of those, uh, you know, factors and processing, right? But we all also know that LG has always been neck and neck with them. You know, there's been times where people would even say that certain aspects or certain factors of LG's processing actually is better than Sony and vice versa. So they trade blows, right? But I think overall, most people would agree that Sony's processing at the end of the day does lead, even if it's not, you know, by a lot, it's still a small lead, right? But things have changed. All right, guys, let me just tell you something. They've changed because I'm going to grab the camera and I'm going to show you what I'm noticing. And again, I'm hoping that my camera can see this. This is my first time ever doing it, so I don't know. But let me tell you guys something. Um, even though the, the details are, or the fine details, let's just say are not, you know, 50% better, 20%, even 20% better, 15% better. That little bit of 5% better is maybe I'm just, you know, underestimating how much better it is versus the G3 and the A95L, but it's it's noticeable. It really is. And what I mean by that is that I'm going to show you, but there's just more details within scenes that require, like, you know, that will show more details than an average TV uh, has a capable of actually displaying. What I mean by that is those details are there, but because of your, because of your TV's, let's say, restrictions or capabilities, uh, they can't get up to that level that can pull those details from you know the creator's intent the scenes and their you know so and the, the the G4 is doing a superior job it really is so again these differences are minor but they're noticeable all right do I think again going back to my statement should you get a you know, if you don't care about those things, trust me, guys, you'll be happy with the G3. And if you're not happy with the TV, the G3, yeah, you can always just exchange it. Just make sure that you understand, you know, the return policy for that specific size TV from whatever retailer you buy from. I still recommend a, a legitimate retailer, not some kind of flyby website. But, um, you know, that... You're not, you're not going to notice these things unless the, the TVs are next to each other, right? So I'm going to grab the camera, and I'm going to be as quick as I can because I do got to go. But we're going to go to the G3 first, and here's what I noticed, right? You see this area right here? You probably want to 
you know, put <coughs> your brightness up on the display that you're watching. But these areas here, right here, they have like these fine details in them, right? I'm trying to bring the camera really close. You see that? All right? And then when you walk, when you're at a distance, again, these are all things that you don't notice unless you have the TVs next to each other, right? And we're going to go to the G4. I don't know if you guys can see that, but look at how much more detail and depth and clarity there is, even with dynamic tone mapping on. Look at that. So, again, it, the difference is small, but it's noticeable. You know what I mean? Like, it's hard to... But look at it. See how it's kind of like more washed out? You don't see it as much. It's like they refined it. Their processing can handle that processing better of fine details. And boom, look at that. We're going to go to the A95L, right? See how it's similar to the A95L? Look at it. But let me tell you guys, the crazy part is, is that... The G4 does it the best, hands down. That's my point, little things like that. So again, you're not going to notice these things in person. You're probably not going to care about it unless you had the TVs next to each other like this. So that's my point. I'm telling you guys, I would recommend the G3 if those are the types of things that you can really care less about. Simple. And... Um, I think that's kind of like a common sense statement at that point. You know what I mean? So, um, me and a lot of enthusiasts and a lot of people who are into, uh, TVs and things that pay attention and, you know, obviously I'm not a pro, but I am a consumer who, uh, does enjoy, uh, my experience. And I feel like the, the better the, uh, processing goes, you know, once you're into this type of hobby, the more you want from it. So even if it's that 5% better, 10% better, whatever it is, um, even if you can squeeze an extra few features here out of the TV and things like that, um, you're gonna want it, you know, when you're someone like me and a lot of other people out there. Um, and a lot of people out there are a lot bigger than me on YouTube, that's for sure. And um, they obviously know what they're talking about too and they have their own perspectives and they're awesome and um, I look up to every single one of them you know what I mean I don't care uh, what anyone says but they all have something to offer which is amazing so thank you guys for um, everything for uh, teaching us and uh, keeping us informed the way you guys do in your own style that's amazing so thank you for me I'm more like on the consumer level and um, I just love these TVs and I really try to be as transparent as possible just to show you guys what I see. All right. Um, now, let me just see if I can show you guys another area over here. I haven't played this game in so long. So, um, all right. So, yeah, here we go. This is what I wanted to show you. So over here, guys, again, um, dynamic tone mapping on. It's going to look more blown out on the G4, but I promise you guys it's not. But here's another thing that I want to point out, all right, that the G4 has improved over time. I'm going to pick up the camera again, and I want to show you guys. All right. So... <coughs> excuse me have the moon right there right this is going to be a little bit harder for my camera to pick up because of the highlight but there's like a small ring going around it there right and I know that could possibly be creator's intent but you can see maybe some banding or you know uneven colors and things like that on a G3 Got to look close, though. Going to the G4, 
as you can see, see how it's just more like you see the ring right going around the highlight but you see how like it's more even keeled like it's just got a a smoother gradation to it right there um where it doesn't look like it's uneven and the colors is kind of banded and it just looks smooth you know what i mean that's another improvement that i've seen because when you go to the a95l you can kind of see it that the A95L with dynamic tone mapping on pretty much does it the best. You see, and these are all little things that you notice, but you have to stare at the TVs for a while. Uh, you have to just keep them still. And, uh, you, you know, you can ob observe the processing a little bit better when you just sit there and look at the same thing for a while. But anyways... Other things like this you won't really notice. Like you see this area right here, right? You see the reflections and all that right there. You see how beautiful they look on the G3? Take it to the G4 and look, with no extra processing, no nothing, look at how much sharper that looks. We'll bring it back, I'll show you again so you can look. You see how beautiful that looks, right? But look at this little, little four to five percent better does this. Look at that. You see that? It's incredible. I, again, I could be underestimating how much better the clarity looks and how much better the processing looks. But guys, when you say things like this about 3D, and look how 3D that looks, right? And then you bring it back to the G4. Look at, you wanna talk about 3D, look at that. And that's not even messing with expression enhancer or anything like that, right? And then look, boom, beautiful, right? Kinda of like a happy medium for the A95L, but you can see that although the A95L has nice gradation and smoothness and everything to it on the highlights, it's still not as 3D looking, you know? I mean, don't get me wrong, it does look nice and it does have that 3D, that depth perception, but it's not like this. Like, I don't know if you guys can see that, but to me, it's clear. And then look at how good the G3 looks. They're still the masters of, of that, all right? But... I just think that that and your overall picture improvement and then enhancing that depth, that 3D depth, even though it's like, again, a small percentage better, that's what you're getting. That's your upgrade right there is that processing. It's just that clear processing and it looks like an A95L color wise too. You don't. It's not as extreme. Now, don't get me wrong. When you compare it to a Samsung, I think it's a lot more noticeable when it comes to the colors. But that's, to me, the only thing now that, let's say, an S95C or an S90D would have over the um, G4. Because the G4, color-wise, to me, it looks like... It can pretty much hang out and don't get me wrong there's certain colors that are obviously better particularly red but I saw a bigger difference in the color red between the G3 and the A95L with the with the G4 you're not seeing that much of a difference anymore in that color red it looks red and uh you know, it's it's an improvement. Again, it's not as good as the QD OLED in that specific color, but man, I'm telling you right now, it's barely noticeable. It's just it's that much better, and um, it's pretty amazing what a small percentage better can do uh, with a with a TV and its processing. So. That's pretty much about it, guys. Um, I don't want to waste too much of your time. I will get a little bit more uh, in-depth 
into these comparisons, but I do have to go because there's a lot of stuff I have to do and I got out of work late. So um, I worked a ton of hours recently and it's been hard um, and I still have other other things that I have to uh, do and errands to run and uh, things like that and uh, not a lot of time, but I promise you guys I will get you a better comparison. Um, I was thinking about actually downloading um, Ghost of Shusima because it's not downloaded into that PS5. I feel like that's a really good uh, game to you know compare side by side with these three TVs. And I think um, the next time it's possible that you're not going to see the G3 anymore. I think I do. I think I found a a new happy owner of that TV. Um, but we'll see. I might have it. I might not within a week or so. Um, either way, guys, I want to let you know that I appreciate all your support, everything that you do for me. And, um, you know, I, 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 uh, I love it. So please let me know in the comments, uh, what you think. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll, I'll do whatever I can to help the best I can, uh, and, and answer all of your questions. All right, guys. So thank you so much. And I